Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. We have a guest whom you've heard before, Rick Aspden, who's the deputy CEO at Faith Farm Ministries. You know that great place where you can buy, sell, donate, uh, just and then for people who are addicts in, in whether it's alcohol or drugs or something that's, you know, terrible to them, they can participate as a student. So, Rick, uh, what is happening now with all those people there? Are they practice? I mean, how can you practice separation? Well, it's, it's um, extraordinarily difficult to, to practice, you know, complete separation, um, but we're doing the best we can with what we, what we have, understanding that our community is, a, is, is that. The, the, the community, um, you know, eats together, sleeps together. Um, it's, like a, it's like a house. Just, it's like a big house. And so, um, you know, we don't, um, I, I guess we don't react quite the same as, as we would if we were bringing everybody in on a regular basis every day. And so, um, you know, we, we've, we've stopped, uh, you know, our, our church services and we have instituted, um, you know, some smaller class sizes so that, um, you know, we can try to mitigate the situation the best we can, um, you know, but at the, at the end of the day, we're still running, um, or regeneration, uh, drug and alcohol regeneration program, and um, uh, we definitely are not going to send our students home. Uh, many of them don't have any place to go anyway. Right. And so um, we, we, we are continuing to do what God has called us to do and, um, and trying to, um, you know, uh, put all the safeguards in place. So tell me what you're doing with the thrift shops. Are they open? Well, currently the Fort Lauderdale um, thrift store is closed. We had to close that last week. Um, we closed the um, Boynton store yesterday. And I, I believe, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I believe Governor DeSantis um, just put a stay-at-home uh, order out for the entire state. And so I've got I've got to read it, but it looks as though we may have to close the Okeechobee campus thrift store today oh for, my for tomorrow type thing. Right. Well, it's it's making us all rethink our lives, isn't it, Rick? It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there will be good things coming from this, even though it's hard if you're sick or if you have a loved one who's sick, or unfortunately even passes away from it, but <clears throat> generally speaking, I think we're all rethinking the way that we've been living. See, I think when you go to Faith Farm, these people are so fortunate to have a place that loves them and cares about them and provides everything for them. And now we're living in a world where so many people have lost their businesses and they've lost their income, and a lot of people who have spent foolishly you know, are now going to have to pare down. Right, yeah. It's a very difficult, difficult situation. It's really a transition, in a sense, isn't it? Right, um, yeah. That's what you do, though, at Faith Farm. I think, I think you can really, these people are safe there because they're not going anywhere, you don't, and you're not allowing visitors in. Right. So, as long as nobody has been affected there, you're in pretty good shape, aren't you? Um, so far, we're in good shape. Yes, um, you know we're we're we've taken we've taken um, you know some some steps along the way um, to you know uh, guard not only our staff and students, um, you know, and but and our customers uh, from from the, the virus and, um, you know, continue to obviously pray over the campuses and, and, uh, and our customers and, and our staff and, and, um, and really, really are just, um, you know, 
focusing on the Lord and and um, and His protection, and and uh, we're going to get through this thing. Right. And and what are the questions when people do wonder why uh, why God is letting this happen? Well, you know, it, this is this is a tension that we have. Um, obviously, you know, Scripture is pretty clear that um, you know our way and, and God's way is much different. Um, the the one thing that that you know from uh, from my perspective, my personal perspective, is that um, you know what is happening with the coronavirus uh, is not um, God wrath on on I don't believe it's God's wrath on the world I, I don't believe it's God's job description when you look at the the stealing the killing and the destroying um, that's the enemy's job description and it's not God's and so although God will um, use this situation um, for the good for those who love him and are called to his purposes um, I don't believe that this is uh, something that um, God manifested on the world Thank you, because there are a couple of, you know, preachers out there, and I've heard that, and I think it's terrible. He, you know, that's not right. He's taking Well, all- you know, here's the, here's the situation is that um, we, we love, you know, there are many different, um, there are many different um, interpretations of, of what is currently going on, and, um, you know, my interpretation is just different than theirs. Uh, I, I just I want to I want to make note that I love my sisters and, and brothers of the faith that have different points of view than than I particularly have. Um, I, I just know my Lord is a loving God, um, and at the at the depths of my foundation, the, the really the foundation of my theology is God is good and Satan is bad, and yeah. that's kind of as as and that may be juvenile in some people's minds, but that's that's really the depth of my foundation is that that I know that God is good and Satan is bad, and this there's nothing good, you know, of this except when it gets used by God. And so God, I don't believe caused this, like I said before, and and uh, but through this, um, He will use it in not only in people's lives but in our nation's lives and the world for that matter. Yes. That's those are wise words. I uh, I think you you do have a, a tremendous kind streak running through you. I've noticed that when we're together, <laughs> and I think that's what your students notice too because they are hurting. And uh, this is they're not hurting though as bad with this as they have been with their own problems. I mean, this is not a them in a sense, is it? Right. No. Th- I mean, when you look at when you look at some of the things that you know the students have experienced throughout their life, um, this you know really is on the outside edge of the radar when it comes to the worst thing that has happened to them or or can happen to them um, when they're caught up in their in their addiction. Um, you know, they many of our students have literally destroyed their lives um, and. You know, um, or in the processes of rebuilding, uh, rebuilding their lives, and so, um, you know, they uh, and God didn't bring them to Faith Farm for them to fail, and didn't bring them to Faith Farm for a virus to take them out. Um, exactly. And so, they, yeah. they're, um, you know, and that, that's kind of, you know, and it's good, like, you know, from a program standpoint, and, and some people are not going to understand what I'm about to say, but from a program standpoint. Um, it's good to have these kind of events happen in people's lives in a controlled setting because then we, we as counselors and, and pastors and men of men and women of faith, we, we get to uh, partner with them as we walk through life together in the midst of this obstacle that we're all experiencing. And so it really is beneficial in the student's lives. They might not think it now, but they will as they get through it and get on the other side of this thing that they were able to walk through this and not go use. They were able to walk through this and not destroy a family member's life or, you know, a loved one's life. And so um, it is beneficial from a, from a, um, a program standpoint that we get the opportunity to walk through this 
difficult time in their lives with them and show them how to manage their emotions, manage their their thoughts um, right in the midst of the struggle. Yes, that's because, true. Big struggle. You know, to, life is always life is always going to happen. Of course. You know, once they leave, once our students leave the bubble, so to speak, we 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 uh, affectionately call Faith Farm a bubble sometimes. Once they leave the bubble of Faith Farm, life is still going to be out there. Life is still going to happen. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be conflict. There's going to be, um, you know, successes and failures. And all those have to be have to be managed in a productive uh, way that promotes sobriety, that promotes, um, you know, Christian um, love and, and brother brotherhood. And so... Um, when our when our students and that's what being being a disciple is all about is, is is you know not only while they're at Faith Farm but continuing on their walk with the Lord after they leave Faith Farm and that's why it's so important for us to uh, making disciples not just getting people off of drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, my guest is Rick Aspen excuse me Aspen Don and he is the deputy CEO of Faith Farm Ministries. Faith Farm has three. Uh, lovely campuses, one of which is Boynton Beach, the other is Fort Lauderdale, and then the one out in Okeechobee. And they do so much for so many people, besides the students, of course. Uh, people can go there and buy uh, beautiful things inexpensively at their thrift shops, and they will be open short. They'll be open at one point, as soon as the virus, you know, is, uh, is on its way out. And then they also, um, uh, people can donate, which is a fabulous thing for people. They get rid of the things they don't want, and it, it presents excellent things for people to buy. But I, as you were talking, I was thinking, what if someone, what if a student leaves, and he's doing fine, and he leaves, and he's running into trouble? Can he call someone there at Faith Farm and get a little bit of help? Oh, of course. Um, you know, when our students leave, um, they have, you know, telephone numbers that they can call. Many of us, many of us will give them the, our business cards, you know, and, and say, hey, listen, you know, don't be shy type thing. Um, you know, we really promote a brotherhood. So as, as a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood, excuse me, because I, I don't want to forget about my sisters. Um, you know, as, as the students walk through the different classes together, they, they build this, this, camaraderie this this uh, bond with their with their brothers and sisters that um, extends or continues on past the program itself and so they are they are developing friendships through the program that will last a lifetime and so not only do they have an opportunity to call their brother or sister but they also have an opportunity to call back one of the staff members uh, to talk about, you know, a situation that we, they may be going through. Uh, frankly, that happens to to me a lot. Where where uh, former students will call. I just happened to be last week where a former student called and and uh, he was doing has been doing very very well, um, but you know he broke his ankle and and so he was you know looking for advice on how to get through surgery and and you know because. See, an addict when they have when they have to have surgery, they're putting themselves right back into a spot where they could relapse very very easy. And so, to do the pain management wow. without, narco- without narcotics and and to make some very very hard decisions and put some very very stringent guidelines in their lives during this period of time. And so he went through surgery. I, I talked to him. Um, uh, I talked to him on Sunday, and he's, he's doing very well. Um, you know, his pain, he's able to manage his pain without narcotics. And, um, and so, you know, but these are the kinds of things that people don't think about that, that, that addicts struggle with on a consistent basis. If they hurt themselves, the first thing our medical people want to do is, is help them with their pain, of course. Right. But that help is the very thing that can destroy their lives. And so it's, it's very... It's, 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 you know, it's, there's a lot of tension there for the, the, the recovering uh, addict 
when something like this happens. And so, you know, this student called and, and we counseled together and prayed together. And, and I keep in constant contact with him over this, you know, time in his life that so that if he is starting to, to uh, struggle, he has some, somebody to help him, help him get through the tough spot. So, Rick, you're saying that, uh, what I'm hearing is, even if he had some pain medicine for a short time, that it, that would really take him down. It has the potential to. It has the potential to. It, um, they have to be very, very careful and very, very, um, you know, uh, they have to really have some accountability if they do happen. You know, because some surgeries, you just can't get around it. The human body can't withstand that kind of pain. Um, uh, so, you know, but there has to be some serious accountability put in someone's life, uh, if they do that, you know, and the doctors have to know, the nurses have to know, parents have to, parents have to know, the student has to submit themselves to some serious accountability or they'll find themselves back in their addiction very, very quickly. Never thought about that, Rick. Wow. Uh, so you're so experienced, you see, so you knew immediately. Does this, uh, in your classes, is this uh, situation explained to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is all part of, this is all part of our, you know, exit strategies that when the students, you know, are preparing to graduate. And we, you know, this is talked about a lot in, in some of the different classes, you know, the boundaries that have to be put up, the boundaries with people that have to be put up, the boundaries with Sometimes loved ones that have to be put up, uh, and the boundaries with, you know, um, substances that they just frankly cannot use because it will absolutely take them back into their into their addiction very very quickly. Hmm. Even with all their learning, it's still it's in their system. I gather some people have they have tendencies, don't they? Well, they do have some tendencies, but. You know, a lot of, you know, especially a chemical dependency, it, it reacts um, to, you know, in the brain differently and fires that portion of the brain. And um, it can it can take them back into a relapse very, very quickly. And so we just have to guard against that. Um, you know, it's the same thing with, with um, sometimes we have to tell them they have to set up boundaries with people, too. And it, that's it's very, very difficult, but it has to happen. You know, for an example, um, uh, some, uh, you know, generally, a lot of times, maybe a, um, they'll have a family member that's in addiction. Well, they can't be around that family member, at least for, for uh, you know, in the, in the short term, they can't be around that family member, because if that family member is, is using, uh, that can trigger the, the addict to want to go use too. And so ah. we we have to we have to guard we have to teach them to set up some boundaries in their life to where, you know, if I'm gonna visit you, you're coming to my house or we're gonna go to a public place where there's people around so that so that you know, just putting some things in it's not that they don't love them. It's yeah. just that they can't be around them, you know, because of their own for their own health sake. You know? It's interesting. These are things that one who has not had an addiction don't, don't we don't think about it really. Right. But I can see though there are other things like that. Maybe it's not necessarily drugs or something that serious, but other things. There are people who do drive people to addiction of different kind. <laughs> right. You know, it's just don't want to be around them because it causes them to go crazy in different ways. Right. Right, you know, and, and people trigger other people different differently, um, you know. So it's just something that we have to we have to teach the men, to, men and women, to put some boundaries in their life um, that would promote um, good health and and good um, mindset, uh, you know, moving forward to to limit their um, their opportunity for relapse is basically all we're doing. Right. And and some question I've never asked you before, sometimes you need more help there. You know, you need people to join the staff and you need them into sometimes a higher position. How do you decide that? If you just observe them throughout 
their being a student and then being, you know, doing their other jobs. Because I'm sure there are times that you want to promote someone. Well, we we we'll, you know the 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 program is a ten month program, um, and then once a student graduates, um, you know, we they have an opportunity, and you know, we we assess whether it's a it's a good opportunity for them or not. Um, they have an opportunity to stay on for an additional year as a what we call an advanced student. And, um, you know, an advanced student, we just basically feed back into their lives for another year and, and, and walk life out together. And um, they have, they, that's a, a one-year program. And then when that year is up, they have an option to, of course, go, go out into the world or another option to stay as what we call an advanced two student. And that would give them another another year of opportunity to stay and and be fed into. Now, a lot of the people that get to that kind of level uh, as a student are are really um, men and women that have felt called into um, some type of ministry, either to the addicted or just ministry in period. And so, a lot of those people um, that that kind of have, have um, you know, felt the call, those are the people that we would, we would consider uh, as bringing, bringing them in on, on staff and, and, um, and, you know, because there's a culture that we, we want to um, promote on the, on the uh, campuses. It's a real culture of honor. It's a culture of, of, um, you know, brotherly love. And so to bring somebody in from the outside sometimes can, can, um, not that not that they're good or bad people. It's just you know it's hard for them to develop this culture that we're trying to develop uh, because that's the the culture. This culture of honor is the best for the student. When they see this culture of honor, they begin to implement that culture of honor in their lives, and it's really beneficial for them and their family. And so this is this is something that we we do on a regular basis as as people move in and out of Faith Farm. Um, you know, and as the Lord calls them to different portions of ministry. I love that name, Culture of Honor. We've never really written any article about that. Culture of Honor. So they've, they've done very well, and they're there because they want to be more than they, than they are, right? Well, yeah, and they want to give back what, 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 is, what has happened in their lives at Faith Farm. They now want to give that back to the students coming in behind them. And so um, they have an opportunity to feed into somebody else's life what's been fed into their life. Um, and it, it, really, it really solidifies their recovery. When, when, when this happens, it really solidifies their recovery. When, and, and, you know, the, the many 12-step programs uh, teach the same thing. You know, when you begin to give back, when you begin to, um, you know, start helping people with the help that you've gotten, it, it really um, brings your percentage of relapse down considerably. We know, Rick, that volunteers get more from being a volunteer than they give. And, and that's yeah. what that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I know I've spoken to so many people there, and uh, I know some of them have really had hard times, and now they're they're in enough, another world, and of course they're appreciative. I'm, I'm sure that some of your students who have gone home, and they are very successful, and hopefully they donate, and that's something I know that you, I hope you promote it. I'm sure you do. That's the way that they can thank Faith Farm and help it to keep going. Right, yeah, and, you know, we've made it. We've um, just recently uh, made it much easier for our alumni and, and, and students and, um, and the public at, at large to give to Faith Farm by texting FAITH to 561-462-4492. Um, it's, it's amazing, you know, with the technology that we have today, um, 
you know, you can text that and there'll be a link text back to you and, and you can give through um, text messages. You can give through text messages? Yes, yeah. My goodness. That's fantastic. Well, I do want to give everybody the website because it's so easy. It's faithfarmministries.org. Yes, they are a not-for-profit, and they they just need help. They need people to donate. They need you to put. They need everyone who's listening to put them in your will. You don't have to give them a lot. You know, you gave them. Well, you want to give them at least a thousand. You can give them ten thousand. You can give them a hundred thousand. But you're going to know that your money is doing something that is so unbelievable for so many people. They've been doing this over 60, what, 67 years or something like that? 69, 69 years. Nine years. So you know that the money that you give or your family gives, you know, you ought to start a trust. It's a wonderful place. Um, I'm, I'm certainly hope that I become a millionaire one day and I can donate a major fund for them because... I believe in them so much and what they do. I don't know of another organization, and I've said this so many times on the radio, that can see the results. Lots of organizations, you do donate and they do nice things, but this is a result-oriented organization. And all you have to do is go to one of their graduations or you, you just go there and you buy things and you talk to some of them. They are so thankful, and it's done in such a loving, beautiful way. And that's why they have people like Rick there working um, all the time and being there to comfort, to comfort and, um, and uh, there's a word, oh, and motivate. You're a big motivator. You know that. Well, I, and that's what the Lord has called me to do is to motivate, uh, motivate people to live unashamed and, and sold out for him. And when that happens, we never have to worry about a student um, ever uh, relapsing. Um, when when that mindset is in place and, and lived out, um, it's, it's so interesting to watch the Lord work in these men and women's lives. And I have been privileged at the graduations to see how not just the students, but the families. I mean, they sometimes the families, the mother, the father, sometimes the grandparents, the children, they're so thankful that they can have their mother or father back. And that can hardly put words to that. Lots of tears. Yeah, no, that's for sure. That's for sure. Well, it's um, Faith Farm. Remember, it's faithfarmministries.org, and you want to help them. And I know that everyone's going through this crisis right now, and maybe you can't deliver your goods there now, but you can still call them, and then when things are okay, they'll set up a date for you for them to pick things up. Remember, it is tax deductible, which is really nice for you, as well as you can go buy new items, new furniture, new things, or oh, used ones. A lot of you now want maybe exercise equipment or something, but can't go now. And I'm sure you'll announce on our radio show when you are open. Oh, yeah. Hopefully Absolutely. it's going to be in the next month or two. You know, it's, it's hard on everybody, but... Just look at the positive sides of your life, and uh, you can just be home learning new things and doing more that you than you never had time to do now. And uh, just keep away from everyone, though. That's the big thing. Don't take a chance. I mean, I haven't been to the grocery store since it started, really. <laughs> hmm. I have enough. I have enough that I can live on, and I'm doing fine. But, Rick, it's, it's great to talk to you, and I, I wish you well, and... And just be careful and take care of those those women and men. You you are such a, a joy and so nice. I'm always glad when you come on the radio show. Well, we appreciate you um, uh, allowing us to come on, and, and we're thankful to all the people that have supported what God is doing here at Faith Farm. Uh, we continue to pray for you on a consistent basis. Um, we, we thank you for how you've supported us over the 69 years that the Lord has been, been doing this. And, um, you know, we look forward to uh, continuing to join God's work at what he's going to do in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. Thank you, Rick, so much. And remember, it's faithfarmministries.org. Okay, we'll talk to you again, Rick. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. God bless.